<laughs> Dr. Jonathan Harton is our guest here from the Mountaineer Recovery Center. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me today. Great to have you here, sir. You look great. Yeah. Sign me up for whatever the youth program is, uh, the Fountain of Youth, that you and Ponce de Leon have uh, discovered here. Well, you know, uh, we've been working with a, a number of members in the community. We have a nonprofit organization called Semper Libri. Uh, it's based upon the state motto, uh, if you've seen that in the flag, Montani Semper Libri. Mm -hmm. And so Semper Libri is, is on a mission to help empower people in recovery to live with freedom and purpose. That's our um, our uh, mission statement. And uh, what we found is that so many people, after they leave residential substance abuse treatment and try to reintegrate back into the community, uh, run into some challenges that um, is not provided for with uh, typical medical or mental health services. And those three main things that we see people run into are problems with housing, um, with getting back into the workforce, and then transportation. So Simper Libri was set up to try to provide um, those three services or at least help uh, direct those members who need those services to the right resources so they could um, make an economic difference back into the community by getting back into the workforce. I want to let you promote your golf tournament coming up before we get into some other questions too. And uh, where are you going to be playing and when is it? Yes, yeah, so Semper Libri has a, what we're calling Rounds for Recovery. Mm -hmm. It is uh, September 18th, so about six weeks from now, out at the Woods Golf Course. Uh, registration um, can occur there between 9 to 11, and then we'll kick off in a scramble format from 11 until about 3. Uh, all the proceeds will go to um, furniture to be uh, provided for the uh, recovery residences that are being built in the recovery village out in Kearneysville. How much does it cost to play and how can you register? So it's $100 a person to play. Uh, if you go to the website, simperly.org, um, and there is um, uh, their place for rounds for recovery, individuals can sign up for playing as individuals or co companies can register as sponsors um, to get some marketing and publicity and to be associated with this great event. Is this your first year to have the golf, golf tournament? It is our first year and uh, we're very thankful. There's some um, wonderful residents out at the Woods uh, Golf Resort uh, who live out there who actually came up with the idea. Uh, they were familiar with the Recovery Village concept and uh, wanted to support the project and uh, came to us at Simperly and said, um, we would like to support this and, um, and one thing's led to another and then we'll have this tournament here in uh, September. Yeah. You've mentioned a couple of times uh, Recovery Village, and you've been on before talking about the Recovery Village. Uh, would you explain how the Recovery Center and the Recovery Village kind of sure. merge together? So the, the Mountaineer Recovery Center is a residential and outpatient substance abuse treatment program. Uh, people who come there for treatment, um, you know, many of us know someone, have a loved one that's needed help and uh, maybe has gained from being at Mountaineer Recovery Center. And the, the, those costs for those services are reimbursed by insurance or Medicaid, um, just like going to any other medical provider. When they leave treatment, they oftentimes need the help and support with getting back into the workforce, um, having transportation and housing, and um, insurance does not pay for those kinds of more social services. So Simper Libri was set up as a separate entity. It's a nonprofit that provides the social services that insurance will not pay for. And of course, one of those services was housing and many members will leave treatment with good intentions. They're very motivated to stay clean and sober, but they go back into a, a, a living environment that's not supportive of sobriety, of recovery, and they fall back in the same old habits. So, um, so Simperly uh, started out to uh, provide that gap, fill that gap, and so the Recovery Village is a place that Simperly will be providing the housing for members to live in. For how long? How long can you stay there? Yeah, it's up to two years is the length. Uh, Simperly ha will have a grant with um, the VA Medical Center to provide housing for veterans after they leave the, the VA hospital, and the, the VA sets the limits of up to two years. 
And how many units will there be in the recovery village? Well, we're taking a stepwise approach to that, Bill, and we're initially going to have uh, 48 housing units out there at the village to start with. That's in our phase one. And excuse me, this will be for family? That will just be the individuals, individuals. not families okay. yet. Okay. And then okay. after they've had some time to get stable in the workforce, save some money, uh, then we plan to be able to offer them phase two, which is when they can move into one and two bedroom apartments. And phase two, we haven't started construction on that, but once we finish phase one, that will be the next ambition. This is a fairly ambitious project, and I understand, I think, from earlier conversation, this is the one of a kind, at least in West Virginia, maybe one of a kind in the United States. Is that correct? It is the first of its kind in the United States. No other place like this where a whole neighborhood is set up around the shared value of sobriety. Um, and, you know, most of us pick a place to live based upon people or the environment that reflects the shared values that a person will hold, a family neighborhood, a retirement-based neighborhood, a rural neighborhood, a more urban, uh, whatever the values that a person espouses. And there's never been a neighborhood set up that is solely um, based upon the value of sobriety. So everybody living in there will be sober um, there won't be any drugs or alcohol in the, in the neighborhood. Those will be restricted. Um, and so we think it's going to have a big impact um, so that people can um, get clean, stay clean, and then contribute back to the community by staying active in the workforce. What happens if you violate the no drug rule in those homes? Say that again, Ralph. What happens if you violate the no drug rule yeah, in those homes? So, yeah, so that's the other thing that's an important part of, of living in there is people will have to agree to be routinely screened and monitored. And, um, and then if they do um, come up with positive uh, drug screens, then they'll be offered treatment um, either at Mountaineer or another provider of their choice, perhaps with Berkeley Medical Center or another facility in the state. Um, and the hope is that they could get themselves stable and then come back. Um, but individuals who are actively using would not be allowed to stay in, in the community. Doctor, there, this would require a lot of golf tournaments to make this happen because it's, it's a, a pricey uh, endeavor. Where, do you, where are you getting some, your money, some of your money? We are looking at about at every different uh, rock we can turn over. So the golf court, the golf tournament is one vehicle that we're we're doing, and, and that's in part because it helps increase community awareness, gets community buy-in by having people participate, and um, also creates a good um, kind of a spree de corps of people coming together to celebrate this effort together. Um, but our board is very actively involved in a lot of grant writing and a lot of pursuit of different avenues of, of fundraising, whether it's through um, political means, through money that might be appropriated, um, whether it's through different um, agencies. Uh, like, for example, we're applying for um, some grants with the um, Department of Housing and HUD. Um, those are means. And, you know, as companies come in, like um, Procter & Gamble, like um, many of the others that are bringing in large employers. The problem is that people are making $18 an hour, $16 an hour, can't find affordable housing. And so people who are early in recovery obviously are part of that equation. And so this is not just to help support people in recovery, but also support the community by providing affordable housing for employers and those who are looking to support the community in that way. Is the the recovery village the first stop for anyone, or is it the, are they vectored out of the recovery center? Yeah, good first? question. So you know, since we've started <clears throat> advertising this on the Simperly website and spreading the word around the state, we have been getting applications for people to already start coming, even though it's not finished, from treatment centers all over the state. And when we first opened the recovery center. One of the things that was most striking to me, the recovery center was set up to be a service to the people of the Panhandle because there wasn't any facilities like ours in the Panhandle. There's several down in Charleston, the southern part of the state, and Huntington, and the northern Panhandle. And I was surprised to see that in our first year of operation, we had referrals coming from all 55 counties of West Virginia. And so when I would ask people, why did you come here from Huntington when there's a facility in Huntington? People would say because it's because the jobs that are available after they get out of treatment. 
And so if somebody's in Mingo County and they, they go to a treatment facility in that area, when they finish treatment and go back home, there's no work for them. There is work for them here. And so they want to come here, get clean and sober, and then go to work. Other people who are going to other treatment centers around the state uh, still want to come to the Panhandle and then are looking for the housing to give them a stable place to land. Uh, some people who are coming out of um, the different jail systems, they have to have a home plan to be released by the courts. And um, the Simperly is oftentimes sought out for that as well. So even though we're not open yet, we are the recovery village is not complete. We do have many people already applying from all over the state. I have been told that addiction is an illness, not a habit, right? So is there, for the residents of the recovery village, is there ongoing, inherent to the village, is there ongoing treatment and counseling and, and such? It is expected that members will have some level of in treatment, whether, and it's not exclusive to Mountaineer, it'll be wherever they uh, would already have that established or want to pursue. We have good collaborative partnerships for treatment with uh, Berkeley Medical Center, with Shenandoah Community Health, uh, several of our providers in Charlestown. Um, the Berkeley Day Report Center, the Jefferson Day Report Center have good programs. And so uh, we want to just be supportive of people being involved in whatever is going to be helpful in sustaining their recovery. How about the rescue mission? Do you work closely with rescue mission? You know, we, we haven't directly. Um, they have been a great partner in um, housing people and um, been very thankful for Pastor Tim and the work that he's done there and all the churches that have been involved. Um, and they're under their own fundraising mm -hmm. uh, project and, and modification of the village. And so um, many of our uh, employees at the recovery center are involved in their own respective churches who then are involved with, with the rescue mission and the work that's being done there. And, um, but we have not had a direct involvement mm -hmm. with them in the, a kind of a collaborative treatment way. Jeff Haddix on our Facebook page has a question for you, Dr. Hartens, and that is, he said, it uh, looks like the construction is at a standstill at this time for the village. That's the appearance, I guess, he's getting from seeing it from a distance. Is that true? Do you have a delay going on right now? Yeah, we do. So I'm glad you brought that up or uh, someone um, put that up on Facebook. So we um, got some initial funds um, at the beginning of this year in January, and we started construction, and um, our... Um, contractor panhandle builders has done a great job and they've been great to work with and they really moved fast and got a lot of work done um, we've since had a lull in our um, funding in terms of ongoing uh, stream of grants and grants tend to come in season so right now we're in a lull in the summer in the fall we'll be submitting grants for a number of other um, applications and then as um, anticipating receiving those awards then we will continue to move forward with the construction and our target is hopeful to be completed by spring early summer of next year and have residents moving in when do, when do you think your next uh, tranche of grants might be coming through well we we have several that will be applied here in august and then they'll be notified this fall with with the funds distributed um in around the holidays and so then we'll be um hopefully be resuming construction at that point uh, Panhandle did a great job. Really what's left is the siding on the uh, houses, um, doing the, the drywall and the trim work and the flooring. Um, so it's not a lot of, of work done. The time intensive work with the roofing, the foundation, all of that, the putting in the electrical and plumbing has already been completed. Is there any danger of any dilapidation of those structures if they sit? No, they've got it secured pretty well. It's it's tight. Uh, the inspections up to this point have been completed and and um, we monitor it pretty closely and, and uh, still do a number of shows over there. We welcome people to come in and take a look at the place and see um, if we can educate the community. Um, so we're there on the on the at, on site almost daily. So you say there are 48 units? Is that what you said? The, that will be in the village? Uh, yes, we have, let's see, it's uh, a 12 and 12 in the two men's houses and then 18 in the women. So um, I, I'm not good, so good so with give math. So give me a verbal tour of what one of these apartments looks like, is, is living room and? Yeah, so there are three large houses. The women's house is 10,000 square feet. The men's house is about 6,000 each. We have two of them. 
Uh, one house is for men that are coming out of uh, being been in justice impacted, either been involved at ERJ or involved with the Department of Corrections. Um, and they're set up where they have Jack and Jill bedrooms, where they'll have bedrooms shared with a bath in between. And, um, and that'll enable them to have some privacy, but also be within a uh, congregate living house. What separates our house a little bit more from some other houses that are around the state is that we will have house managers who live in the house um, who are several years in sobriety to um, oversee, make sure everybody's in by curfew. They'll be the ones giving drug screens, making sure everybody's getting off to work during the day, and uh, just overseeing all the program rules. So that's going to be a nice asset to maintain the stability. We've kind of skirted around the issue, but what's going to be the final price tag of, um, of, of, of the village? Yeah, phase one, the price tag is about $5 million, mm -hmm. all total. Um, and um, that's in for those three houses, for the infrastructure and for the uh, road inlet and um, all of the architecture and engineering. Uh, the second phase, which will be much um, more complex because we're going to be building a men and women's apartment building, um, that'll start phase two, and, and um, that'll be a good bit more plus since we started. The inflation of construction sure. prices has just really shot up. Have you had any trouble getting the work done in a timely fashion when you've had the money to keep the project going? We haven't. Um, you know, as I mentioned, uh, the, the uh, Alan Henry and Justin at Panhandle Builders have been great to work with. They've been um, really um, uh, aggressive in getting things done, and um, we've been very thankful, and I've been quite impressed for how well they've been able to overcome those kind of supply chain difficulties. Let's circle back to the golf tournament again before we close in a couple of minutes and uh, tell everybody again the dates, locations, and such. Yeah, so the golf tournament is, is going to be an exciting event. It'll be on Monday, September 18th out at the Woods Golf Course, and uh, we're excited to have corporations uh, s provide sponsorship. Um, there's sponsorships from just small amounts from sponsoring a hole for $100 a hole up to um, five or $10,000 if somebody wants to become um, a golden sponsor. And that's all available on our website at simperly.org. Um, or members can sign up as individuals just to come out and play. Uh, we have several of uh, the community vendors, Applebee's uh, and Chick-fil-A will be providing food and drinks for the event. Um, and then we, l we look to, between now and the event, have some more corporate sponsors providing some things for door prizes and things like that. I don't have a lot of time, just a few seconds left, though, but have you seen the attitude regarding addictions and substance abuses changing in the community over the last 10 years? Absolutely. It's been much more um, understood and receptive, uh, doesn't have near the stigma. And one reason why, regretfully, is because so many people have been affected by it with their loved ones or, or, or family members. Good to visit with you again, Dr. Hartens. Thanks so much for having me, Rob. Always good to be here. Absolutely. Let's pray for good weather for your golf tournament day, too. Okay. Hey, we take our uh, final break here on the program. Dr. Jonathan Hartens from the Mountaineer Recovery Center. Don't forget their golf tournament mid-September here. The